Hello, dear students. This is your engineering mathematics three lecture. Today's topic is normal probability distribution. This topic is from fourth unit probability and probability distribution. Already we have discussed binomial distribution and Gaussian distribution. Now here we are going to discuss about normal probability distribution. Normal distribution is a continuous distribution. It can be derived from the binomial distribution. In the limiting case, when n, the number of trials is very large, and p, the probability of success is close to 1 by 2. And the probability of success is close to 0 0.5. The general equation of the normal distribution is here. It is given by y is equal to f of x is equal to 1 upon sigma into under root 2 pi into e to the power minus half in bracket x minus mu upon sigma whole square. Here, sigma is standard deviation and mu means the mean, this is the notation of mean, see, where the variable x assumes all values from minus infinity to infinity and sigma, called the parameters of the distribution respectively. They are known as mean and standard deviation of the distribution and that mu lies between minus infinity to infinity and sigma is greater than zero. X is called the normal variable normal variable or variate and f of x is probability density function of the normal distribution. See what is x? It is called the normal variate, normal variable and f of x is probability density function of the normal distribution. See the graph. The graph of the normal distribution is called the normal curve. This is the normal curve. It is bell shaped and it is symmetrical about the mean mu. See, that curve is symmetrical about the mean mu as shown in this figure. The two tails of the curve extend to infinity. These two tails extend to infinity. It, uh, two ends do not touch the x-axis. That uh, two tails of the curve extend to minus infinity, sorry, plus infinity and minus infinity, plus infinity and minus infinity towards the positive and negative directions of the x-axis respectively. And they gradually approach the x-axis without ever meeting it. The line x is equal to mu. This line is x is equal to mu. Divides the area under the normal curve above x axis into two equal parts. This curve x is equal to mu. This curve divides the normal curve in this line x is equal to mu divides the normal curve into two equal parts above the x axis. The area under the normal curve between any two given ordinates x1 and x2 represents the probability of the values falling into the given interval. The area between these two ordinates, x1 and x2, this shaded portion, this area represent the probability between these two ordinates, x1 and x, x2. And the total area under the normal curve above the x-axis is 1. This total area under this normal curve, its value is equal to 1 because here in normal distribution, area is connected to probability. So definitely the uh, area, of, complete area of the normal curve, it is equal to 1 because the maximum value of probability is also 1. So this total area is 1 here. That is integration minus infinity to infinity f of x dx is its value is 1. And thus, probability between x1 and x2 is equal to integration over x1, x2, f of x dx. This is the value because here probability is re, uh, connected with area under the curve. This is a beautiful relation developed by the normal distribution. It is also equal to integration over x1, x2, 1 upon, you know, the value of f of x. f of x is this value, probability general equation of normal distribution. So you know the value of f of x. f of x is this equation. And if we put here the value of this f of x, this integration, it reduces, it becomes like this. Okay. Now, standard form of the normal distribution. Okay. Standard form. What is not a standard form of normal distribution? If x is a normal random variable with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, then the random variable z is equal to x minus mu upon sigma as the normal distribution with mean zero and standard deviation one. 
and the random variable z is called the standard normal random variable c we are going to introduce here the standard normal variable how it is introduce here see if x is you know that if x here x is a normal random variable with uh, mu mu is the mean and standard deviation is sigma then the random variable here z which we have introduced here a new random variable z which is equal to x minus mu upon sigma it has the normal distribution with its mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1 then the random variable z this random variable z is called a standard normal standard normal random variable thus the probability density function or the normal distribution in standard form is given by f of z is equal to now we have converted x in terms of z so your function is now f of z not f of x in place of f of x now it is f of z is equal to 1 upon under root 2 pi why it is like this see this is the uh, general equation of the normal distribution given by now we have converted x in terms of z so your function is here f of z is equal to 1 upon sigma the when we introduce z in that case standard normal variable then the value of standard deviation is 1 so this sigma its value is 1 and again the value of mu is 0 mean is 0 uh, written here so this equation it reduces to or it becomes Becomes one upon under root two pi into e to the power minus half z square. Okay, that uh, we replace x by z. Mu is zero, sigma is one. So this is the equation of the normal distribution in standard form, and that lies between minus infinity to infinity. Now this uh, function is this. Is, equation is free from any parameter means it is free from mean and that standard deviation this is useful to compute areas under the normal probability curve by making use of standard tables using standard tables you can calculate the area which is nothing but the probability of the normal curve so under the area under the normal curve the area under the normal curve is divided into two equal parts by z is equal to 0 now we introduce here z the standard normal variable then the curve will be that normal distribution curve will be like this here and in, in this diagram z is equal to 0 that area under the normal curve is divided into two equal parts by z is equal to 0 this line is nothing but z is equal to 0 mean is equal to 0 and it divides the normal curve into two equal parts the left hand side area and right hand side side area uh, z is equal to 0 to 0.5 because of this z is equal to 0 that normal curve is divided into two equal parts the half region is 0.5 and the next half region is 0.5 okay now the property area property the first one probability between z1 and z2 is equal to when we have to find out the probability between x1 and x2 using normal distribution then we convert x1 and x2 in terms of z1 z2 and then we find the area uh, find the probability between z1 and z2 now see what is the formula to calculate the probability between z1 and z2 it is equal to if z1 and z2 both are positive then the curve that diagram will be like this when z1 and z2 are positive then they will be in uh, rhs side and then uh, the probability between z1 and z2 is nothing but the area between z1 and z2 now this complete area is of z2 and this area is of z1 so if we subtract the area of z2 minus area of z1 then we have the probability between z1 and z2 because area is connected to probability so the formula to calculate the probability between z1 and z2 is equal to area between z2 minus z1 the maximum area here is of z2 minus area of z1 it is equal to probability between z1 and z2 this is only when z1 and z2 both are positive okay the next is probability of z is greater than z1 probability when z is greater than z1 see this is the this is the curve 
this is z1 z1 is positive suppose z1 is positive then z1 will be here in rhs side okay now you have to find out probability when z is greater than z1 means this shaded portion is we want the probability of this shaded portion because we want the probability of z when it is greater than z1 so calculate the probability of this shaded portion so it is nothing but the area of rhs side which is equal to 0.5 minus area of z1 so the formula is 0.5 minus area of z1 if we subtract this area of this rhs side now have the value of area of this shaded portion and this is nothing but the probability when z is greater than z1 so this is the formula now the third one is when z is less than minus z1 means when your z1 is negative minus z1 then it will be in our sorry lhs side this is the line for minus z1 and we want z less than minus z this is the shaded portion shaded portion area is or we want the probability of this shaded portion because z is less than minus z1 now how to calculate this probability now this uh, lhs side complete region is of 0.5 and you subtract the area of z1 area of z1 is this blank region if we subtract this region from 0.5 we have the uh, area of sub sorry shaded portion and the area of shaded portion is nothing but the probability of z less than minus z1 So the formula is 0.5 minus area of z1. Okay. Now the next is um, find the probability between minus z1 and minus z2. Means both z1 and z2 both are negative. Then they both will be in LHS side of the curve. Z1 minus z1 and z2. Now find the probability be between these two. Means both are negative. So uh, the area, the probability between these two is this shaded portion. so you calculate the area of this shaded portion that will be the probability between z1 and z2 so how to calculate the area of this shaded portion area of z1 this area of z1 is a big portion minus area of z2 area of z2 is this blank portion of in here lhs side so the formula is area of z1 minus area of z2 that will give you the probability between minus z1 and minus z2 So both are negative, so both lie on LHS side. So subtract the area between these two. The last one is find the probability between minus Z one and minus Z two. Sorry, here it is plus Z two. Z two is positive. So make a correction here. This is positive. Okay. Here, Here the area the find the probability between minus z one and plus z two means z one is negative so it will be in normal curve it will be in LHS side and plus z two will be in RHS side now you find the probability between minus z one and z two so how to calculate the area between minus z one and z two you just do the addition of area of z1 plus area of z2 that will be the shaded portion okay? and that shaded portion is nothing but the probability between minus z1 and z2 so you just do the addition of area area of z1 plus area of z2 so this is the formula to find the probability between minus z1 and plus z2 now how to calculate the area this is the uh, table like the logarithmic table or this is the table to find the area of normal curve these are the values of z and using the values of z so from the values of z you can find the area for the value of z 
Now here is one instruction. In each row and each column, point five to be subtracted. When you find the area, you every time subtract zero point five from that area. That will be the that will be your correct answer. Okay. Now next. Next example. We are going to solve the example. Assuming that the diagram of one thousand brass plugs taken consecutively from machine form a normal distribution with mean zero point seven five one five centimeter and standard deviation zero point double zero two zero centimeter. How many of the plugs are likely to be approved if the acceptable diagram is zero point seven five two plus minus zero point double zero four centimeter? See, what is the example? Assuming that the diagram of one thousand brass plugs taken consecutively from machine form a normal distribution, means it is clear here that it is the example of normal distribution with mean. Mean is here. Mu is equal to zero point seven five one five centimeter, and standard deviation is given zero point double zero two zero centimeter. So write down in solution. Now, how many of the plugs are likely to be approved if the acceptable diagram is 0.752 plus minus 0.004 centimeter? Means in this now diameter here, 0.752. You at once add 0.004 centimeter, and at once you subtract. 0.004. So you will get the value of x1 and x2. See what is x1? 0.752 plus 0.004 is equal to 0.756 centimeter. What is that x2? You subtract this 0.004 from 0.752, and so the calculated value is 0.748 centimeter. So these are the values of x1 and x2. Now from x1 and x2 you find z1 and z2. You convert x1 x2 in terms of z1 z2. So Z1 is X1 minus mu upon sigma, and Z2 is X2 minus mu upon sigma. Here you put the values of X1 mu and sigma, X2 mu and sigma. Calculate, simplify, and calculate. Z1 is 2.25, and Z2 is minus 1.75. Now we want how many of the plugs are likely to be approved if the acceptable diagram is no. Find the probability. It means that find the probability between X two and X one. Here X two is small and X one is a large value. So you find the probability between X two and X one. Now how to find the probability between X one and X two? First convert X one X two into in terms of Z one Z two. Here we have converted uh, that X one X two in terms of Z one Z two using the relation. Now after finding Z one Z two, you find the probability between Z one and Z two. Now what is your Z two? Z two is zero point seven four eight. Now, sorry, the two, the two is minus one point seven five. Now, what is the area of one point seven five? That is the question. And then, see probability between Z one and Z two. Now, that Z one is positive and Z two is its value is negative. You see the diagram. Z two is negative minus one point seven five is here in LHS side, and Z one is positive, so it. Lies in RHS of the normal curve, two point two five. Okay. Now we want the probability between Z one and Z two. Means you find the area between Z one and Z two because area is connected to probability. Now what is the area between Z one and Z two? This shaded portion is the area between Z one and Z two. Now what is the area of Z one and what is the area? Means you just add the area of Z one plus area of Z two. That will be the probability between Z one and Z two. Now question is what is the area of Z two? Now what is Z2 here? The value of Z2 is minus 1.75. You see the distribution table, normal distribution table, 1.75. This is 1.7 and 5, 5. The difference of 5 is see the difference of 5 here. 1.75. This is 1.7 and see the difference of 5. 0.05 here in this column. 0.05. 1.7. And the difference is of 0.05, so it is 0.9599. This is your area. 0. See what is your area here? 
zero point. This is zero point nine five double five. This is your area of one point seven five. Now subtract zero point five from this value zero point nine five double nine because here it is mentioned in the table. It is mentioned that in each row and column. You subtract zero point five. So subtract zero point five. If we subtract zero point five from that value, then we have the area. We have the area here. Zero point four five double nine plus area of Z one. What is Z one? Z one is two point two five. You again take the uh, value of area two point two five from the distribution table. 2.2. You see in the result 2.2. The 2.25. Five. The difference is of five. So 2.25. This is 0 0.9878. 0 0.9878 is. The area zero point nine, two point two, in the row two point two, sorry two point seven, two point seven five, zero point double nine seven zero. This is the area. Subtract point five from that area, so you will get the area zero point four eight seven. Two, sorry, it is two point seven five, not two point seven five. It is two point two five, two point two five, two point two five, zero point nine eight seven eight, zero point nine eight seven eight. Subtract point five from this area, two point zero point nine eight seven eight, and so the area is here. Zero point four eight seven eight. Can you just add these two areas? That will be your answer. Zero point nine four double seven. So number of flocks. This is the probability between x one and x two. It means the probability between z one and z two because we have converted x one x two in terms of z one z two, and we have calculated the area between z one and z two. It is nothing but the probability between x one and x two, and it is zero point nine four double seven. Now this is the probability between x one and x two. Now we. Wonder our aim is how many of the plugs are likely to be approved if the acceptable diagram is means uh, assuming that the diagram of one thousand brass plugs out of one thousand brass plugs taken consecutively consecutively how many plugs are likely to be approved that is our question so out of one thousand so multiply this probability by one thousand so that we have the number of plugs likely to be approved and it is equal to nine four seven point seven. Nine four seven point seven means approximately it is nine four eight. So nine hundred forty eight plugs are likely to be approved. This is the answer. And this example is over here. And so today's session is over here. Thank you.